what's up everybody so today we have a ton of stuff to talk about and sadly a lot of it is potential character deconfirmation stuff and i know that's not the most fun thing to discuss so fair warning anyway let's dive right into it so first off i hate being the bearer of bad news but i was sent a leak recently and Sadly, it might deconfirm one of our remaining often talked about and anticipated potential Smash characters. Actually, any character from a certain company this new leak may potentially deconfirm. So since this is a leak talk thing, obviously, spoiler warning. And again, I hate having to be the one to show bad news about any character's chances for Smash, but here we go. So over on Discord, I was sent a message. I blocked out a good amount of this message for anonymity's sake. Works at Ubisoft, privy to some stuff about Brawlhalla, but as far as I know right now, no Smash. TMNT for Brawlhalla and Street Fighter next. I don't think either have been announced yet. So you're just gonna have to trust me and take my word on this one. And while it could be faked, it'd be a lot of effort for a fake Brawlhalla Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles leak. Now, Brawlhalla is a game made by Blue Mammoth Games, but they were acquired by Ubisoft, and now the game is published by Ubisoft. If this leak is true, then apparently Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and some character or characters from Street Fighter are coming to Brawlhalla. Street Fighter has been getting a lot of crossovers these days, and the Turtles seem to be all over gaming lately, just like in the old days. And they haven't heard anything about a Ubisoft character coming to Smash. So if we believe evidence here, then likely no Ubisoft characters are coming to Smash. Obviously, if the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles get revealed for Brawlhalla, it could have a domino effect on the validity of the other aspects of what's being claimed here. If TMNT is revealed for Brawlhalla, then likely Street Fighter is coming to Brawlhalla. And then also likely there might not be a playable Ubisoft rep in Smash, since this person didn't hear about that. Obviously, the biggest character hurt by this would be Rayman, who I know people are still hopeful for. Rayman actually is in Brawlhalla too, and of course he's also in Smash. He's a spirit in Smash Ultimate. Rayman was a trophy back in Smash Wii U and 3DS, so there have been a very vocal fan base hopeful for Rayman to become a playable fighter for a very long time now. Ubisoft has a good amount of other content in Smash already, but no playable fighter. Multiple Mii costumes are from Ubisoft, and they have multiple spirits in Ultimate. And maybe it's still possible more of that is on the way, but it seems a fully playable Ubisoft rep is likely out of the running if you believe what this person is saying. Possible character deconfirmations suck. Trust me, I know. Alright, so with that out of the way, we sadly have even more possible character deconfirmation stuff to talk about today. This next one is more of a theory than a leak though. So multiple people informed me about this next one, but it seems to have originated as a 4chan post, so I can't really credit the anonymous person who came up with the theory. The person who posted the theory does post using this image of Yoshi from the Super Mario Adventures comic that ran in Nintendo Power back in the 90s. Quick side note, that comic is amazing, and we can only hope the future Super Mario Bros. movie can be as good. Anyway, this 4chan poster's theory is about the crowd cheers in Smash, and specifically the crowd cheers for Fighter Pass 2 characters. So crowd cheers are basically these audio files in Smash that play when a character is doing really well in a Smash match. When a character has survived with a high percentage for a long time, then the crowd starts to cheer the character's name. Well, what this person noticed is that during Fighter Pass 1, the crowd cheers were recorded in lots of different languages. Japanese and English, of course, but also French, German, Spanish, and whatnot. However, for Fighter Pass 2, every fighter only has crowd cheers in Japanese or English. And apparently, the English crowd cheers might have even been recorded by the Japanese team and not native English speakers. So the theory is that they likely have not hired back the European teams to record lines in other languages for the second Fighter's Pass. To add on to this, here's one of their posts where they start off quoting a post about Xander, the voice actor for the Smash announcer, and some publicly known information about the recording process for Smash. After Cloud's reveal, Xander stated in an interview that he had no idea what characters would eventually get added, since he was given a huge list of characters animals, non-video game people, or titles to call so he wouldn't be able to leak who was getting in. Notably, he did pronounce Snake's name, but he was merged along a bunch of animals, and wasn't believing Duck Hunt was a character. So we already know Xander records a ton of names when recording the announcer for Smash Fighters, and they seem to give him a list of a lot of characters, and just generally stuff that won't be fighters at all, to keep him in the dark about what characters are actually happening. 
and also so that they don't have to call Xander back in to record new announcement tracks later on if they can just get a ton of names recorded. Okay, so with this information in mind, it does seem Sakurai and the team avoid calling back the voice actors as much as possible. And Sakurai has stated the team has gotten smaller and smaller as the DLC has gone on. If we look at the characters in the second pass so far, the voice recordings have actually been pretty minimal. Min Min has only one voice actor in all versions, and the crowd cheer is the same. Steve is of course completely silent, and the crowd cheers are the same in all versions for Steve and all the alt costumes, like Enderman, Alex, and Zombie. Sephiroth speaks only in Japanese, and again the crowd cheers are the same in all versions. Cloud also only speaks Japanese, so Sakurai was probably just being consistent here with that series, and also there's some legal issues with uh, the Final Fantasy VII English voice actors and some like union stuff that Nintendo just won't deal with. So Japanese was inevitable for Sephiroth and Cloud. But still, we see a limited amount of voices being brought in to record for these Fighter Pass 2 characters. And then with Pyra and Mithra, they only have Japanese and English crowd cheers recorded. They have different names in Japanese and English, of course, so this does make sense. And while their names, Pyra and Mithra, are the same names used for the characters in other languages, like German and French, they still used the same crowd cheer recording as the English one. Well, because they recorded new crowd cheers for characters like that in different languages for the first Fighters Pass. Like Byleth in English has a crowd cheer that says, Go Teach! but as a totally different crowd cheer in other languages, even though the name of the character is still Byleth in those languages. So all this added up, it seems we have ample evidence now that the Smash team has avoided calling back in the European voice actors to do the crowd cheers as much as possible. They haven't come back at all for Fighter Pass 2. The English we hear may even be the Japanese voice acting team saying the crowd cheer in English. Whether or not someone with English as a first language is doing those crowd cheers, specifically it seems the various European languages are not being called back to record in for the crowd cheers for Fighter Pass 2. Alright, so what can we infer from this? Well, the theory proposed here is that any fighter who would require French, Spanish, German, etc. voice acting is probably not going to be a part of Fighter Pass 2. The two big series that are brought up with this theory are Pokemon and Sonic because Pokemon say their name all the time and require all the European languages and different voice actors to be brought in and record, as Pokemon tend to have different names in different languages. And similarly with Sonic characters, we already have several in the game who speak lines in Smash. And so far, all the voice actors in all the different languages have been brought in to do those lines. And Sakurai does seem to be a stickler for consistency with this sort of stuff. Now you can make the argument they'd simply hire whatever voice actors are needed for some specific Pokemon or specific Sonic character if one was happening. But with only two characters left, and knowing they have avoided hiring outside of the Japanese and English voice acting teams so far for Fighter Pass 2, it seems unlikely there's one character left that they're going to make a huge exception for and hire back in a whole bunch of people. Now, some people took this to mean any character whose name isn't the same as it is in Japanese or English would be out of the running. For instance, Master Chief has a different name in French than he does in English. However, the person who came up with this theory cleared that concept away and said, My point is not that a character cannot get in because he has a different name in some language. But my point is that a character that would obligatory require French, German, Italian, and Spanish voice acting is not happening. And that's only the case for Pokemon, since they scream their names, Cinderace has four or five different voice actors required, as well as Sonic characters, since they've all been localized in six languages. Even Tails, who only has three lines in the background, got six voice actors. So this point is not stating the crowd cheers deconfirm a character by themselves, it's the proof that they didn't hire the European voice teams again for Fighter Pass 2. Meaning, no Pokemon or a Sonic character can get in. If it was Master Chief, I doubt they'd voice him in French, German, Italian, etc. They'd just keep his Japanese and English voice actors. So this is really only a theory against characters who would require excessive voice acting work in multiple languages. Much like how Sephiroth is Japanese speaking across the board and is consistent with Cloud's voice acting, a character like Master Chief could just always speak in English across the board. And if Master Chief is called Major or whatever in France, much like how the Japanese voice acting team simply recorded Pyra and Mithra crowd cheers for their English version, they could do the same for the French name. They could just have some Japanese people say the name in French for a simple crowd cheer. It can all be done in-house with the teams available without excessively calling back the voice acting teams in Europe. 
It's not about the crowd cheer people not being brought in, that they wouldn't be able to do those crowd cheers. The crowd cheers are simply evidence that they haven't contacted any of the European voice acting teams for Fighter Pass 2, and that probably means they're not going to do that at all for any future characters. A Pokemon character like Cinderace would need tons of lines in all the different languages. And to be consistent with the Sonic representation in Smash, a Sonic character would also need to hire all the different language voice actors back in. Again, this would be about consistency with these series and how they're represented in Smash already. Some new series could get away with only recording the lines in Japanese or English and just having the character act that way across the board. Now, it's possible the Pokemon Company or Sega and Sonic Team could simply provide already pre-recorded lines from these characters in tons of different languages, and they wouldn't be recorded specifically for Smash, but they could just be sent over to Sakurai and the team from the parent company and have those already on-file voice recordings used in Smash. It's a possibility, it's a little limiting, but it would be a workaround for having to hire in a bunch of European voice actors, but it does seem unlikely. And with Pokemon getting multiple spirit events already, and Sonic getting those Mii costumes, and now all this evidence that the European language teams have been avoided for Fighter Pass 2, and they're likely not going to be part of it, I do have to say, with all that in mind, while this theory is not 100% a deconfirmation, it certainly makes a Pokemon or Sonic character seem very, very unlikely to actually be happening. Feel free, of course, to hold out hope if you still really want to, but in my opinion, the cards don't seem in their favor, sadly. And any character we do end up getting will likely have a very limited amount of languages their voice work is done in. All right, so after all that negative deconfirmation speculation, let's talk about some more positive speculation. And surprisingly, this one once again has to do with voice acting and recording work. So over on Twitter, Canadian guy A said, Crash Bandicoot's voice actor just posted this on Instagram. Him and Lex are working together on a new project that may or may not be Crash Bandicoot related. The Instagram post says, well, looky, looky, it's hashtag Neocortex and hashtag Crash Bandicoot working together on a fun new project, dot, dot, dot. No, this one is not another Crash game. Or is it? Haha, ha, winking face. I always enjoy sharing mics with at Lex Lang. I know we're supposed to be professionals, but at what point do I ask him for an autograph? Canadian guy A went on to say, remember, this might not be a Crash game, but this is a Crash product. It could be Wumpa League, Crash Team Racing sequel, a funny cameo in Spyro 4, Crash and Smash, the Crash cartoon, the beginnings of Crash 5. There's a number of things this could be. We'll wait and see. All right, so the voice actors for Crash and Neo Cortex are doing some kind of project together and are teasing it on Instagram. Like Canadian Guy A said, it doesn't necessarily have to be a new Crash game, but it could be Crash related. They are teasing their collaboration together and mentioning the Crash series a lot, so it seems like it's something Crash. Obviously, the out there theory I'm interested in is if this could be them recording something for Smash. Maybe the Crash reveal trailer could involve Crash and Neo Cortex and need them both recording that. Well, they were actually asked directly if this was the case, if this was actually about Super Smash Bros. SK Ray is Blue wrote, Are you doing your lines for a Smash trailer, perhaps? And their response is a shrugging shoulder emoji. The sort of deflecting non-answer one might expect when someone is under like an NDA and can't answer a question directly and just wants to respond with something vague. Now thinking this is a recording for a Smash trailer for Crash is of course a very hopeful scenario. There has been Crash 25th anniversary stuff all year long and we've been promised lots more is happening so this recording could truly be for just about anything. But if Crash really is coming to Smash, and if a trailer for that was in the works, we of course now have something to point to as potentially evidence for such a thing actually possibly existing. A Crash trailer may have been recorded. We don't know for sure, but it's possible now. Next up, remember that Wise leak? Or Ease leak? Whatever the series is called. I called the series Wise for a very long time, so it's really tough to shake that. Anyway, the leak said that Adol or Reen might be coming to Super Smash Bros. Well, we actually have something happening soon that could potentially fit with that one. We have an upcoming game trial starting on the 17th for the Yeez series. It says, All you can play, Yeez 8 for a limited time. Nintendo Switch Online subscribers only event. The latest work, Yeez 9, will be released on Nintendo Switch. So why is this significant? Well, in the past, some of the game trials have lined up with character reveals for Smash. Last year, Three Houses got a game trial announced on January 14th, 
And then a few days later, on the 16th, Byleth was revealed for Smash, and the game trial actually started on the 20th. A bit later, on March 26th, we got that Nintendo Direct Mini, where it was announced the next Smash Fighter would be a character from ARMS. And on that same day, we got a new game trial for ARMS. Now, getting a game trial for a Dolls game series, of course, doesn't mean he's going to happen for Smash. We've had plenty of game trials happen that have had nothing to do with Smash characters. And to actually coincide with this game trial, the character would have to be announced any day here. Honestly, tomorrow is when it starts, so he'd have to basically be announced tomorrow, which seems extremely unlikely, especially given E3 is a month away. Yeez 9 is coming to Nintendo Switch in July, which would fit for when an E3 announced character could potentially get released. And a doll could be very similar to someone like Terry, where he's from a relatively obscure series, but with great music and a good history, which could surprise a lot of people if it found its way into Smash. However, I think a doll would be a really strange E3 reveal. And without the Adol leak in mind, I don't think I'd even be thinking at all about this game trial happening. So it's just something to keep an eye on for now. One thing I'm sure most people have already heard about was a leak that happened earlier this week from Nintendo Life about a possible new Donkey Kong game in the works. The article was titled, Rumor, the next Donkey Kong is being developed by the Super Mario Odyssey team. And the article says, YouTuber Lonely Goomba has mentioned the rumor in passing on social media and other sources have also discussed it, but Nintendo Life can confirm that it has heard the same rumor from an independent and very trusted source, which would appear to lend this report some degree of legitimacy. However, our source claims that the game will be 2D, or 2.5D if you prefer, and not 3D. And then there's a tweet from Lonely Goomba and it says, I heard an unlikely rumor that the Mario Odyssey team are working on a 3D Donkey Kong game. I think I would actually prefer that to another 3D Mario. This rumor is also backed up by recent comments made by the leaker Zippo. And Zippo said, it's the Big Ape's 40th anniversary. And while I'm not sure how Nintendo is celebrating the occasion, there is a new 2D DK game being developed by EPD Tokyo. Retro is obviously busy with other things, so Nintendo has taken it upon themselves to bring DK back in as an internal series. Don't expect the country moniker to return, as EPD Tokyo are not interested in making a sequel to games they didn't already make. Diddy, Cranky, and Kremlin Crew should all be returning in this installment. It sounds like this game is launching before the end of the year. An E3 announcement seems very likely. Nintendo Life even updated this article to add that DK Vine had also heard these rumors. So between them, Lonely Goomba, Zippo, and Nintendo Life's own mysterious but very trusted source, it seems some new DK game being developed by the Mario Odyssey team is very likely to be true. I hadn't heard these rumors myself, but I think it does make sense to do something on DK's 40th anniversary, and to bring the Kremlin crew back in, like Zippo said, that would make a lot of sense given how much fanfare K. Roll got. I think Nintendo is aware of that now. Also, we talked a bit last time about that new Waluigi render, but I also mentioned there was a new Diddy Kong render as well. So maybe that render was made for this hypothetical new Donkey Kong game. Retro Studios was handling the Donkey Kong games, but we know they're working on Metroid Prime 4 right now, so the Odyssey team taking over to make a DK game could be a great way to continue the series forward. Maybe a Donkey Kong character for Smash could make a little more sense now if a new game was actually in the works. Potentially something like Dixie Kong as a bonus, maybe semi-clone or complete Echo Fighter or something to promote the future title happening. If a Donkey Kong game really is happening in the future, then maybe ending Smash with a bonus fighter from the DK series could make sense. If a bonus fighter happens at all, of course. Anyway, the only downside to this rumor is that it would mean the Odyssey team is not working on something like Mario Odyssey 2, but instead they're working on this Donkey Kong game. And while I love the DK games, I was sort of itching for more Odyssey stuff. The first game seemed like it teased Isle Delfino a bit, but then never delivered on that. And Nintendo did give us some random Tropical Mario renders, but never announced an Odyssey 2 game. Even getting something like Isle Delfino as a DLC kingdom for the first Mario Odyssey game seemed like something that might happen, but it never did. I know a lot of people really thought we'd be revisiting Isle Delfino at some point, seemed pretty likely, but again, it never happened. Seems like Nintendo doesn't often make the obvious move. All right, a few final things. Over on Discord, Burnt Toast wrote, it seems that in a recent Mario Kart Tour data mine, they found matchmaking and multiplayer data for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This could possibly be an indication towards some major updates for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Mario Kart Tour itself. With the Mario Party update that came out recently, it would make sense that Nintendo is looking to update more of their old games for multiplayer content. As always, take this with a grain of salt. So maybe something between Mario Kart Tour and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is happening. I'd say it seems way too late to make any kind of updated content for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. 
However, I know its sales are still amazing on Switch, so maybe Nintendo wants to keep pushing content out for that game, and I guess something linking it to Mario Kart Tour could be pretty cool. Anyway, maybe this is a good sign Nintendo could start keeping their very well-selling games alive for a very long time instead of just abandoning them after a few years. Even if that content is minimal, I'd be pretty happy with Nintendo changing its ways and keeping old games alive for a long time. For instance, I don't know, something like maybe keeping Smash Ultimate alive with things like more spirit events or even more Mii costumes and patch updates after the Fighter Passes have ended. Just a thought, Nintendo. We also have a Dragon Quest 35th anniversary event coming up on May 27th. There are rumors information on Dragon Quest XII could be announced there. I guess the main reason for this rumor is that it's being broadcast at 12 o'clock Japan time, so 12's fit. Speaking of Japan, Nintendo has finally released the Famicom Detective Club games outside of Japan in these remasters on Nintendo Switch. I definitely suggest checking them out, especially if you're like me and would love to see Nintendo do more remasters and revisit old forgotten Nintendo series. The more people who buy this game, I'm sure the more Nintendo will hear the message that people are in fact interested in Nintendo making content for some of their more obscure, forgotten franchises. Alright, that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I have absolutely no idea if any characters are deconfirmed by any of the leaks or theories and things I talked about earlier on in this video. That is the sadder side of speculation, so forgive me for having to discuss it. Anyway, if you guys have any thoughts or comments about any of the stuff I talked about in this video, leave them below. Remember to like the video, leave a comment in the section below, and subscribe to Papa Gino's a Twitter, a Patreon, a Discord.